Okay, so just to reiterate, um, I will go over the practice exam on Thursday. If you have questions, ask them um, when I'm going around and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, today, I wanted to go take the chance to go over the maze assignment, which is wonderful to go over during October because, uh, or when we get close to October, because October is when you get those Halloween kind of and autumn style of festivals that pop up. And one of those common things are hedge mazes and other types of mazes or or like. And um, and for the most part, most mazes are actually fairly simple to solve with a fairly simple uh, with a fairly simple algorithm. OK. Um, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, the um, the, the the assignment I'm talking about is a maze solving assignment. So um, solving. A, so there's a number of maze solving algorithms rather than walking around the room and showing you. I will just simply do maze solving algorithms. Um, right. And they're. I mean, if you've got an interest in doing any robotics, this is kind of one of those classic things you can do with robotics and vision and and the like. Um, but the basic al the most basic algorithm for solving a maze that we can do is this right hand rule, which is simply put, if you want to solve a maze, left your hand, your right hand on the wall, or you could do the left hand. Honestly, it doesn't matter, right? But you slap your hand on the wall. And you just walk and don't let go of the wall, right? And that's what happens here. This, this, uh, here's our entrance, and so this just simply follows the wall to solve the maze. If it hits the dead end, whatever, it just follows the wall out of the dead end, okay? And gets out of the maze. Now this works in a lot of cases, but it doesn't work in the case like say that your entrance to the maze is is on a wall but your exit to the maze isn't attached to the wall, such as like there's an elevator that takes you out of the maze or something like that. I mean, you'll probably see the elevator, but you know, the point being is that there are some exceptions where this might not work, but it works in the most, in most cases. Um, there's an, and let's see. <laughs> random mouse algorithm, just randomly go through the maze, you'll eventually find the right solution unless you're very, very unlucky, where you just randomly go through it. Um, another common algorithm that we use, and there's a lot of different uh, algorithms here that are on the page, are, sorry, the algorithm that we concern ourselves with is Defer Search. And let's see if this is still, here, okay, but most of the time maze solving is tied with maze generation. You'll find most of the stuff for, for that is for generating mazes. Um, so, and because if you can solve a maze, if you can build a maze, you can probably, so you can use the same algorithm to essentially solve a maze, at least for step first search. Um, and that's what we'll be implementing. So, ah, uh, yes, this is one of my favorite of all times. Algorithms is not for a wor word. It's a good thing. And it's all about practicing and you like practicing with mazes um, and generating mazes. So the idea here is that he tried different uh, ways of doing uh, mazes. Basically consider each maze, each square in the maze to be a point, And then we wanna connect the points. Um, so you can take a, something like this and that becomes this shaped maze. So the question is, how do you create a maze? Um, and the idea here is that we, uh, the first is Aldous Broder, which is a, what's called the drunkard's walk, which basically is a funny, uh, it's just a memorable way of saying it's random. Uh, you choose you choose directions at random and to ge to generate. See, it doesn't really have a much pattern. It repeats stuff. And then when it hits a new square, it removes a wall. When it hits a square for the first time, it removes the wall. And there we go. We generate a maze. Um, not very fast. Um, 
But the big one is uh, doing, but the big thing here is that every single ma kind of maze algorithm introduces some kind of bias um, for the maze. Let's see. So the type of maze that debt for search creates is one with a, um, with a depth for search, I'm sorry, with a wind, kind of long windy passages. So what is, so this is the extra credit for the maze, which is to you implement this algorithm, this maze generation algorithm, where basically what it does is that we, what we make, we create the maze. And then as we basically create a dead end in our passage, once we basically create a place we can't move any further, we backtrack until we get to a new spot. It's a pretty cool algorithm. Basically, you just continue, you dig out space, and when you get to a, a dead end, a place where that would make you want to, you know, start up or create a connection, you need to back up. And so we see it basically, you know, created it created a connection right up, tried it got over here. It didn't want to destroy this wall because that would create another opening in the maze that didn't need. Um, let's see. So there, and, and it, and the fun thing about these, about these mazes is that they can be done with recursion and they can be done without recursion. So let's take a moment to, and now I posted the code and an overview of the code, I believe in the playlist. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about it because the videos are there, but the algorithm that you're going to be using is depth for search. My maze is got a very easy, my, the, the maze I created is very, very easy to see. It's got a, it creates a very, you know, zigzaggy diagonal path, okay, that creates the maze. Um, and so it's very easy to follow. The big thing about the maze is, the, is to understand the way the walls work. Every square in the maze has a wall, okay? That's how I separate everything. It has a wall. And everything that has a north wall is somebody else's south wall. Okay. So when you so when my algorithm, when I create the maze, if I'm removing somebody's north wall, I also remove the the south wall of the square above me. So you don't have to think about that. You only so if if you check somebody's north wall, you know that the south wall and there's no north wall, you also know that there's not south wall above you in the way. Make sense? So um the other thing is that the maze that I create is bounded on all sides by a wall. In other words, you if you check to go first, if you check to go out of bounds, uh, like basically if you're on the top row and you ask, is there a wall to my north? If you're on that top row, it will always return true. And if you ask that first, short circuiting will make it so that you won't have an, you know, you don't have to worry about like uh, an exception or a, a extra case for if you are on the top row. Right, because if you check, you'll like saying, "Oh, if I," because the algorithm is as follows: Can I go to the? Can I go to the north? And have I visited there? You can ask, "Can I go to the north?" by checking for a wall, and you can ask, "Have I visited there?" by checking the color of the square. And the. And. And, and basically, the if you do the first check. Now I've gone away from my what I normally talk about on this, which is that mazes, is that what we're doing with this kind of algorithm is basically what what well essentially what Perseus did for his maze for his solving a maze. For those of you who are not familiar with Greek mythology, um, you have the you have something called the labyrinth, where which was a big maze where uh, the king Minos threw a bunch of a uh, bunch of people in to to be uh, to fed to be fed to the Minotaur. Um, it's actually quite a quite the um, very let's say classically Greek story. But the way that the Minotaur was slain was slain, and the way that Perseus, the hero of the story, got out of the puzzle, so he got out of that uh, labyrinth. Um, was oh you don't oh there it is, was this or Theseus, not Perseus, yeah. So Theseus, he went in with the sword, and Ariadna gave him a bunch of thread, basically to mark where he was. 
And that's what we're doing with our algorithm. Essentially, the point of this thread is to allow us to mark, is allow us to backtrack. If we hit a dead end, we can use the, um, the whatever marking we use to back up. Okay, that's how you solve a how you solve a maze. Now, the way we do this in my algorithm is rather than uh, than equipping Perseus with this thread, we're instead equipping him with some chalk for marking the squares that he's visiting, or Theseus again. The idea here is that we can mark it one color if we're traveling it down, and if we're backtracking, we can mark it another color to make sure that we know when we see it again, we know not to go down that route, right? So we can use one to mark our true route and one to mark a route that we've already been down. Because if you just use one color, it's just going to look, it's going to look, uh, you know, but it's going to look like a wee, like half the maze has just filled in, been filled in with water if you're using blue. So it doesn't really give you a lot of information as to what the solution is. All right. So any questions about the maze assignment? The maze assignment is actually fairly, it's one of those that looks a lot more difficult than it is, okay? The pseudocode is there, you follow the pseudocode. It is meant to be an easier assignment, but it is also meant to be one of those that looks difficult, okay? Um, once you are done with that assignment, the next, I've already posted, in, I've already got the due date up for the next assignment after that, which is, one of my favorites, which is recursion. And that is also a choice of problems assignment. I do love giving you choices, um, which is that with the recursion assignment, we get this, you'll be using this recursion backtracking algorithm, which I'll talk about on other time, but you get to choose. So first off, there's three problems. Everybody does one of them, which is Sudoku, okay? You create a Sudoku solver. And then you get the chance to, cho to choose one of two chess problems, the eight queens problem and the knight's tour problem. You choose one of the two. The knight's tour is more difficult. The eight queens is one of those problems that has been done to death. If you look for a solution online, you will find it because it has been done to death. It is a classic computer science program because of the amount of thinking that it does. So I'm telling you that there are solutions out there, not so you can look at them, but to tell you, please just don't do it. So if you're having trouble with it, come to me so that I can help you get there so that you can, you know, get led to the solution and make the logical and learn the logical, um, the logical steps and the logical thinking that you have to do to solve this problem, rather than just kind of leaping there and not understanding how you got to the answer, right? I'd rather explain it to you than you go and find an answer because, you should not be bereft of this learning opportunity just because it's a well-known, you know, it's because it's been done to death as homework since for as long as computer science was taught in school. Make sense? Okay. Um, same with Sudoku. That one's a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty fairly easy one or not easy, well-known one. Um, and once you solve that, you can solve a Project Euler problem uh, 96 which is um, basically asking you to solve 50 of those. So once you can solve one, you can just simply, the, the additional extra credit is loading it up a file that has 90 of the, sorry, has 50 of them and then proving that you solve. It. All right, any questions on the maze assignment? Again, there's videos about the maze assignment on the playlists. So otherwise, um, Otherwise, I'll be happy to um, go around and help you on whatever assignment or work that you are currently on. You're allowed to be on different parts. You're allowed to be ahead or or on lab four still. You know, it there 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 is this is the point at which a lot of people where the class kind of starts spreading out and depending on their workload. Okay. All right. So stop sharing, and then. I will go ahead and start meeting with students. Let me first work meet with um, students who are on Zoom.